Hey everyone, in this lesson I'm going to talk to you guys about the class of antibiotics known as tetracyclines. I'm also going to tell you guys about how tetracyclines work, what are some of the bacteria that are susceptible to tetracyclines, what are some of the bacterial diseases that tetracyclines can be used to treat, and I'll also tell you guys about some of the contraindications for using tetracyclines. So what are tetracyclines? Well, tetracyclines are actually a class of broad-spectrum antibiotics that act as bacterial protein synthesis inhibitors. Now, tetracyclines are a group of antibiotics, which include something known as tetracycline, as well as other antibiotics with cycline at the end of their name. So an antibiotic with cycline at the end of its name is a tetracycline. So tetracyclines all have very similar chemical structures as shown here with a few different modifications. So how do tetracyclines actually work? What is their mechanism of action? Well, tetracyclines actually operate by binding to 30S ribosomal subunits. Now, um, prokaryotic cells have a 50S and a 30S ribosomal subunit, whereas eukaryotic cells have a 60 S and a 40S ribosomal subunit. So these antibiotics target bacterial ribosomal subunits, so 30S ribosomal subunits. And by binding to the 30S ribosomal subunit, it actually blocks tRNA binding. So here is this a little uh, diagram of the ribosome. The tetracycline actually binds to the 30S ribosomal subunit, as I mentioned before, and this blocks tRNA from getting to the 30S ribosomal sub subunit to actually bring amino acids. Because again, remember guys, tRNAs actually bring amino acids to the ribosome. So in blocking this process, it actually acts as a bacteriostatic agent. So it actually inhibits the growth of bacteria. Now tetracycles are actually very easily distributed within the body, and they're actually very well absorbed um, orally. Now, an easy way to remember this is to actually think about a ribosome as a little mouth and you're actually ingesting a tetracycline. So that's an easy way to remember that they're absorbed well orally. And tetracyclines um, are very well distributed within the body. They go to the lungs and the sputum, they go to the liver, and they also go to the kidney. Those are some of the main targets of tetracyclines. So what do tetracyclines actually treat? Well, tetracyclines are actually very effective against gram-positive and gram-negative aerobes. And they are um, they actually have very limited use against anaerobes. So now another way again to remember this, guys, is that again think about uh, the ribosome as a mouth, and you are actually breathing in oxygen. So that's a, a silly way to remember, but I find that it actually helps remember that um, tetracyclines are good against aerobe, but not good against anaerobes. So what are some of the bacterial species that tetracyclines are effective against? Well, some of them include Borrelia burgdorferi, that's the bacteria that is uh, the cause of uh, Lyme disease. It's also good against Mycoplasma pneumoniae, a, a cause of pneumonia. Chlamydia trachomatis, it's also good against um, chlamydial STDs. It's also good against Rickettsia uh, genus of bacteria, as well as Helicobacter pylori. And some of the conditions that tetracyclines actually are used to treat, uh, such as a community-acquired pneumonia, and then, uh, for a community-acquired pneumonia, we typically use doxycycline. Uh, some other conditions include acne, traveler's diarrhea, brucellosis, Lyme disease, and STDs, as I mentioned before. So those are all conditions that tetra tetracyclines are actually used to treat. Now, uh, tetracyclines... Um, unfortunately have some contraindications for their use. And one of the biggest ones is something known as tetracycline stained teeth. Now here's a picture of an individual that has uh, tetracycline stained teeth. You get a black um, band across the teeth and this occurs during um, teeth or tooth development. And that is why we do not use tetracyclines in uh, children. It is an absolute contra contraindication in uh, children under the age of eight or nine years of age, and it's a relative contraindication with children under the age of 13. And we also do not use tetracyclines in pregnant women for the same reason. Anyways guys, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one.